everybody, it's Amanda here from scrimpingmommy.co.uk and today I'm going to do what's called an envelope in a card or a card in an envelope. <laughs> I've seen several of these round and about, um, it's not my invention and I'm going to be using the lovely um, Tea Room DSP. Now this is called a lightweight paper, it's slightly um, lighter weight than the standard DSP that you get from Stampin' Up! Um, but it means that it's easier to fold if you're doing folded projects and it's awesome for layering and it, the colours are absolutely stunning. They're all double sided, um, they're really beautiful, really really beautiful and I'm absolutely thrilled that my June kit is using this lovely set. Um, so I'm going to be using a few bits and bobs from the tea room suite um, including the beautiful ribbons. We've got um, these metal um, edged, well they're called metal edged, it's like gold gold edged ribbons, one's very vanilla and that one is the beautiful new Coastal Cabana which is the colour in, in this DSP. We're also going to be using the framelits which are called Spot of Tea and it goes with this beautiful stamp set, Time for Tea. You can buy them as a bundle or you can buy them separately. And it's really, really lovely. It's a beautiful set. So, first of all, I'm going to show you the folded envelopes. So, I'm get, getting a full sheet of 12 by 12 here. And I'm going to zoom out. So, oh, you can see my messy desk. So, you can see the full process. So, first of all, we're going to just fold corner to corner. Okay. So, fold it corner to corner, get it as neat and as flush as you can. And um, we're not using the scoreboard, we're just going to do it by hand. Uh, so, there's not really any measurements to follow. You just go in corner to corner, but make sure it is nice and, you know, lined up with the edge. Now, you know, the, D the DSP might not be a complete true square, it might be a sliver of a cat's whisker, not not square, it doesn't matter. I'm just trying to adjust that so that the points meet, that is just a little bit off. Okay, just holding them points together, get together. Okay, so then you've got that which is a bit like a scarf. So then I'm lining this bottom edge up on my um, on my grid paper and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to gently pull these two points together to find the middle of my paper which is round about there. I'm just going to nip it I'm not going to crease it all the way down I'm just nipping it so I know where the centre point is and I'm just going to really carefully just mark it with a pencil so there you can see I've got a little pencil mark which shows me the center of my paper so now we can zoom in so now I'm gonna line that little um, mark up and one video I watched was by Christina Griffiths and she lined hers up on the 8 inch mark so I'm lining it up on the 8 inch mark and I'm keeping it straight across there on my grid and then I'm gonna pull the far corner from the left over and I'm going to go three inches past so I'm going to put my point here up to the 11 inch mark which is here okay and then I'm going to hold it there on that 11 inch mark and I'm going to crease it there okay and get my bone folder in let me just line it all up got it on my grid paper it'll help me keep those creases as straight as possible which is not terribly straight there so let me have another go line it up there there we go you do want to get it as you know as straight as you can but don't oh, you know don't have a panic attack or anything <laughs> so then we fold that back out and then I'm coming with the right side point and I'm going to go one two three and I'm going to line that up at the five inch so there's the five inch there, so I'll just rest my point there, line it up flush with the bottom there and crease. Okay, so you've got two flaps, they don't fold in together at the moment yet, 
So I'm lining that back up at my 8 inch mark here so I know that it's straight and I'm keeping these lined up straight. And then I'm going to pull down this top flap, this top point here. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just eyeball it and I'm just going to come down and, and leave maybe, mm, I don't know, have I got a ruler to hand? Let's have a look. Maybe about uh, two inches. One inch. I'm going to leave an inch. So I'm going to pull it down, leaving approximately an inch. And then I'm going to crease it using my grid paper as a, gu a guide to keep that straight. Okay. So I've got about an inch gap there between the point there and the edge of my paper. Okay. And then you lift that up. And then in between where you've folded this side and where you've folded this side here, you've got a small triangle of paper. If I just mark it with the pencil so you can see, you've got one there. And then you have one there. Okay, can you see that? So you've got one triangle there and one triangle there. Let me just zoom in ever so slightly so that you can see those triangles. One there and one there. We're going to cut those away. Okay. Um, and what I'll do is when I have shown you this fold, I shall pause my camera. Um, and go and pre pre prepare the decoration. Um, Cause I don't have it ready. I've not prepared it. <laughs> so I've cut that away. Okay. Like so. And because this is lightweight paper, it's nice and easy to fold. So I'm putting that back on my eight inch, eight inches mark. So I know that I'm straight, and that this bottom edge is straight. So then I'm going to fold these two sides over, okay, I think I've got that right, have I got that right? Yes I have, <laughs> I thought I'd done it wrong then, and what we're going to do is, we're going to join them together, so we're going to bend them in, like so, and you're going to line and crease in line with that 8 inch mark, so... Very, very simply, keeping it all flush with the bottom. And here, fold that one in. Okay. You can pull it back out if it's not quite right and re. And then, so you've got them so that they join together there and then they're pointing out that way. Okay. Reinforce them creases once you've got them right. If they're not quite right, adjust them. The paper's quite forgiving. Okay, and then what you do is you open that one and then if you've done any kind of origami before, you have this little triangle here, put your finger right in and down to that point and lift that triangle up and then where you have this score line here, you want to push it, okay, so that you've got like a diamond shape like that, okay, so if I just show you again, let me zoom in. Let me zoom in. There we go. So you've got that there. You lift it up and it's like a little duck beak. You put your thumb right in and you push up that score line so that it points and meets up there and you will end up with that diamond shape. Okay? And then you will do the same with the other one. So lift your flap up, open it. Stick your finger in right down to the corner, like so, and then gently coax that and push it up like so to make a diamond. And then what you do is, you've got those and you reinforce all of those crease marks and this then tucks inside the first diamond and it holds your envelope card together and you just recrease it and then from there you go on to decorate it however you like okay so I'm going to pause my video while I prepare my decoration and then I will be back so I'm going to decorate the inside of my envelope card now 
So what I have worked out is that the inside measures five and a half by four and a half. So I have cut a um, a colour coloured layer here, which is Coastal Cabana. I always want to sing. Uh, one of the ladies in the team that I'm part of <laughs> always has made it so that I think of Barry Manilow every time I say the word Coastal Cabana. So there you go. <laughs> and I've also cut some very vanilla. I'll leave the measurements on my blog because I can't remember what size the cuts are. So I'm just going to do a decorative edge here with the with this one, whose name I've forgotten. I think it's uh, delicately detailed and it just does the little people corners so I'm pairing that up I love this punch it's a must-have um, so that I'm going to stamp on and this can be attached so I'm going to um, I'm just going to use snail for for quickness so I will attach my Card stock in here, um, which I cut. Oops, that's not straight. So that it has a nice increment all the way around. I think I did it quarter of an inch. There we go, and it will still, it still will close all nicely. Okay, like so. Yeah. So I'm going to do a bit of stamping now on this. I um, don't know what I'm going to do. I haven't decided. <laughs> this is where we're making it up as we go. But I'm going to use Coastal Cabana because, again, it all matches. And I've also brought in Calypso Coral because this does feature in the Time for Tea um, DSP. So let's have a think. What shall we have? Um... Wound with love and steeped in friendship. I quite like that one. Let's have a look. Where's that? I think I like that. What a lovely um, saying. Okay. So I will mount that. I'm just going to put it on my grid paper first so that I can get it straight. Then attach it to a block. I'm going to use Coastal Cabana. And I'll stamp that in the middle, like so. Let me just practice stamp first. Oh yes, that's pretty, isn't it? These new colours really excite me, I don't know why. Okay, I'm eyeballing it for the centre there. Okay, that is, a, oh, I'm just in love with this set. <laughs> Just take an army I'm just I'm just over excited. Now what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to add some of these. Let me just move that ink out of the way a minute. And these are tea room vinyl stickers. Um and they're like um bronze or rose gold. I'm gonna say the rose gold because I like rose gold. <laughs> so let's have a look. Wow, you get an awful lot here. One two three four sheets um are they all the same no there's two different designs so let's have a look what can we have here um um i really like this these flourishes here are super pretty so let's have um yes let's have one on each of these decorative corners to make that even prettier and we've got lots and lots of elements here um, stickers and rub-ons have a really bad reputation in crafting I always think they're a little bit naff but stamping up I've just got these right because they are the good quality they're not rubbish and they are beautiful One more. I'm just going to add that on there. Oop, get on. Slippery little sucker. There we go. And then we've got these stunning butterflies. So I think I'm going to add these as well. They are absolutely beautiful. 
so I'll just have one there I think I'll just have the one I don't think it needs lots and lots I think one looks really pretty so we'll put these to one side I love these with the little teaspoons and oh we've got little some little buzzy bees there look I might have a buzzy bee I think I will my little bee so we've got a butterfly and then a little bee and how pretty does that look love that so now I can add this inside my envelope card okay you could make a little box to put the envelope card in you can send it as is or you could make another larger envelope a uh, wrap you could do all sorts look how pretty that looks um, that is a lovely lovely stickers so I'm going to close it now and then I will come up with something to decorate the front part I'll be back in a moment okay, so I've planned now how I'm going to decorate my um, card in an envelope so what I've done is I've used uh, another of the beautiful vinyl stickers there just to decorate the top as you can see and then I've quickly off camera used some of the beautiful skinny um, copper edged ribbon there and I've just loosely tied that it can slide on and off and you can undo it um, and then obviously you can undo the card so I have pre-cut two shapes using the tea room thinlets uh, where have I put them? <laughs> where have I put them? have I put them back inside? I don't know if I've put them back inside the um the set. No, I haven't. They're on my desk somewhere under the pile. Uh, <laughs> but basically you get these two almost like doily shapes and one is obviously larger than the other. So the larger one we're just going to very simply adhere onto the diamond there so that it's only attached to the diamond not to the flap and we're going to slide it just underneath the ribbon. Okay. And we'll get it lined up so it's nice and even. Okay. And then the smaller one, we're going to stamp using Coastal Cabana. And I'm going to use this stamp here, which is from you to me. If I just show you the picture, my desk's trashed. <laughs> from me to you, it's this one here, it's lovely. So what I've got to try and do is get that as central as I can within this die cut shape it's probably easier to stamp and then die cut but you know I like to make things difficult for myself so there we go is that in the center no I'm not happy with that I'm going to turn it over and have another go I want it really really central let's try that that's not too bad like I say it's probably easier to do it and then cut it out and the reason I wanted it so central is because I'm going to put one of these lovely circular border stickers because I figured out that these just fit nicely if I can get it lined up with the fancy bit in between there let me just try and line that up like so okay don't be nata. And as you can see there, that lines up really beautifully and gives that a, a lovely border without you having to stamp and, you know, emboss, I suppose. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put dimensional top and bottom. So top and bottom. Get off. and then it will attach to the larger shape with the ribbon in the middle and because it's on a dimensional there'll be a gap in between you can slide the ribbon out it just makes it that little bit easier for opening and closing and if you just bob that on there like so it's not in the middle not in the middle I want to just make sure that my ribbon is between those dimensionals so that you can access the card I want my stamp in to be kind of 
central. And there we go. I'm happy with that. I think that's a really, really pretty. Um, and so obviously you just undo your ribbon, okay, which I have actually knotted on this one. <laughs> I've knotted it so it didn't move. But you can just slip that off and then you open your card to reveal your beautiful inside. So there you go. I hope you'll give that a try. I think it's a really pretty idea. I'm um, sorry for the long tutorial, but I wanted to show you it all. I need to tie that bow again now, ready for my photo. So I hope you give that a try. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.